Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fantastic. In today's video, we're gonna be recreating the Instagram logo in Figma. Let's get started. So here we have an Instagram logo, which is of course an image I downloaded from uh, Google. We will be analyzing the logo and trying to break it down into simpler steps, simpler elements, and then rebuilding this logo from scratch. Let's get into it. The first thing we can of course see is that the general shape of the logo is a square, right? We have a square that is 100 by 100 pixels or points and it has rounded corners. So let's, um, let's do that. Let's create a rectangle. And to create a rectangle, we need to press R on our keyboard or click here. So I'm gonna press R and click anywhere on the canvas. Uh, this creates a rectangle that you can't currently see because it blends in with the background, but let me change the color right here. You're gonna make it black. Then I'm gonna reduce the opacity uh, to around 40% by pressing four on my keyboard with this rectangle selected. Now we need to figure out how much are these uh, corners rounded, right? So let's just uh, lay it on top of the logo, the rectangle, and then just play around with this corner radius setup in the design panel on the right side. And let's figure out what's the ideal amount. So we're currently at 11 and we are approaching the uh, ideal radius, but uh, as we get to 20, I think that's our goal value, right? And I think the closest we can get to the value we can see with the Instagram logo is 22 or 23, something like that. Let's do 22.5 and see if that covers um, the area. There are some irregularities, but I think this is like um, close enough, right? So let me just move this back away and we will be figuring out all the colors later in the video. But as you can see, the overall shape is now uh, sorted out. So let's continue. What do we have here? This and this, well, that's not gonna be complicated, right? These are two circles, two ellipses. So let's, uh, let's actually figure out the more complicated shape first, which is uh, this over here. And it's not really that complicated, honestly. I think this is just a square again with rounded corners. So let's create another square by pressing R and then clicking once. I will set the color to black and then set the opacity to 40. And again, I'm just gonna overlay it exactly on top of the image. And what I'm gonna do now is try and figure out what's the size where the edges of the new square are exactly in the middle of the line. So it seems to be 68. Maybe we wanna reduce this further to 67. Let's try that. And since the distances from these edges are not equal on all sides, I think we're gonna have to move this object by 0.5 pixels, 0.5 points to the left and to the bottom. So let me just, under X coordinates, let me just type in uh, a value that is um, a value that is one half of a point less. So let me just type in minus 0.5, right? And then I'm gonna, to the Y coordinates, I'm gonna add 0.5. So let me do uh, plus 0.5, right? And now the square seems to be at the center of the logo, right? Now let me figure out the rounding. So I'm just gonna keep adding the radius. And I think around 17 is where the value matches reality the closest, right? Now that we have figured out these values, the position, the width, the corner radius, let me remove the fill and add a stroke. And this stroke is gonna be centered against the path. So let me just change this to center. And then I think let's, uh, let's again figure out what's the radius there, right? I think we're looking at 6.5, 6.4. Oh, sorry, not the radius, but uh, the stroke width. I think 6.5 uh, matches this one the closest. And then the radius, that seems to be around 17 or 18, something in that area. And I think that is close enough. There is, There appears to be some overlap in these areas outside the square. I think what's happening uh, with this logo is that there is a certain bulge effect uh, being applied, right? So uh, let's try and mimic that just a tiny bit. I think if, you act, if we actually used uh, this, uh, this square uh, instead, of, instead of the shape that is here, I think 
nobody would be able to differentiate between these two but let's for the sake of for the sake of design let's just try and figure out how to do this so let me actually select the square and then press enter and click once on this path to add new vertex and let me do that on all four sides and as you can see i've already created that one here you need to click here as well to get these four points in the middle of these sides what i'm going to do next is press shift enter to commit these changes and then i will select each one of those vertices that we have just created and move them outside by one pixel right do this on each side right and now that we have done this let me click on this icon the bend tool and then click on these vertices which will make sure that this corner is not sharp you can't really see it but it is a sharp corner but it's going to be soft right so let me just click this boom and you can see that it softened the transition let me do the same here and let me do the same here and here as well so you can see that this is not a perfect square but uh, if you if you notice this curve it kind of bulges a little bit right there's a certain bulge to it but at the same time this is now too large for our purposes you can see that it overlaps right so let me just try and decrease the size of this overall square by setting the width and height to 68 and then center it against the background you can see that we are now more closely matching uh, the instagram logo uh, but I think we need to push a bit more to decrease the width and height to 67. And now you can see that I think the shape is almost there. We just need to change the position of that. So let me change this to add 0.5 pixels to the X coordinates and add 0.5 pixels to the Y coordinates, 0.5, right? And maybe reduce the corner rounding from 18 to 17. Now we are almost there and this is getting really detailed, right? So this is just basically trying to match it 100%. I don't think this has any practical use, but again, for the sake of design, let's try and push it further. So let me just select this vertex again and from the Y coordinates, let me subtract 0.2 points so that it moves to the top right and just figure out which value is the closest for the shape that we can see on the screen i think yeah i think by adding changing this to 256.4 does the trick we're going to also subtract a little bit from this one in terms of the x value like 0.1 yeah and maybe let's add 0.1 to the y coordinates on the last one and add 0.1 to the x coordinates on the right one and commit changing by pressing shift enter and the very last thing i'm going to do is change the corner radius to 17.5 and i think we won't be getting closer than this i think we've matched this close as we can i think i'm unable to match this more closely right so let's just say this is the instagram logo shape i think it's pretty close not 100 perfect but just 99 perfect so let me just create another circle and then again take uh, 6.5 from this um, we're on the right side into the stroke so that would be 6.5 let me set this to center and again let's remove the stroke change the opacity to 40 and let's center this against the background and figure out which size is the correct one i think we're looking at 32 31.5 maybe 31.5 add 0.5 pixels here 0.5 here I'm gonna figure out which value is ideal for the absolute center yeah i think this is close enough right an equal distance from all the sides and i think yeah this is close enough and finally the last ellipse that's going to be over here it's going to be probably nine by nine maybe 8.5 by 8.5 and just add you can add 0.5 pixels to this position and also 8.8 .8 on the width and 8.8 .8 on the height maybe we are getting really close yeah i think this is close enough right so these are our positions 970.3 to 65.9 very close let me just move this over here and again set up the correct position uh, to be at the very center yep that's all right let me group all of these 
we finally created the white part of the logo, right? So this is it. Let me now move this over here onto our old rectangle. Let me make sure that the distances from the edges of the square are equal on all sides, which means adding 0.4 to the X and Y coordinates. So plus 0.4, again here, plus 0.4. Now it is equally distant from all sides, brilliant. Now we can select this, both of these elements and press Command G. So in terms of shapes, I think we have matched the Instagram logo pretty closely. Now it's all about matching the colors and that's gonna be a bit of a challenge. So let me copy this rectangle from the group to here and let's examine what we have here. So what I think is happening with this, uh, with this color effect is that there is one base color and that would be this orange, right? Let's just set the opacity to 100. So our base color can be found somewhere around here, right? That's our base color. Then there are multiple gradients laid on top of this base color. We need to figure out what these are. I think one gradient is a radial gradient with this specific color right here, this yellow. Let's do this and let's enable radial gradient and position this gradient to a similar position that you can find here. So that's about this position, I think. We can adjust positions of these gradients later, but I think that's what's happening here. And then there are two purple gradients so this color or this color right here going from 0.1 here and 0.2 here to transparency so let's add these let's add a fill and this fill let me sample the color from from here let's say and again radial and this radial gradient is going to be positioned right here And also this radial gradient is a bit stretched. So let me do that. I think we are looking at this. That would be the first gradient, right? And then let me actually select this purple gradient and duplicate it. So I'm clicking here, duplicate, Command D. And the second one will be positioned originating from this point. From this point, again, is gonna be a bit stretched, I believe, like this, and ending somewhere around here, or maybe moved a bit downwards, like this, so that this area right here is also purple. So let me actually switch this to linear, and this linear gradient will be positioned like this, right? That's what I believe to be the second purple gradient. So we have figured out the orange, the purple, and now we need to add the blue, which means again going to fill, adding one, sampling the color from the blue right here, and then going for radial again. And this radial gradient is gonna be originating from precisely here. And then it's gonna be ending somewhere around here, right? I believe it's also gonna be stretched across the top side like this. I think we need to add one midpoint that will have decreased opacity a little bit and then additionally playing around with this purple gradient that will be more moved towards the bottom like this. You can see that this area is very much purple. This is just, um, I, you just need to play around with this for a while and figure out the ideal position, I think. Yeah, I think this is close enough, right? This seems close enough. I think we've managed to match the background pretty closely. Let's, uh, let's now select this rectangle, press Command Option C, and then select this rectangle, press V, Command V, and set the opacity well, it's already being set to 100. Now what's left is actually setting this group, passive value, all of these to 100. So we have 40 right now. So let me select these and press 00, zero or actually zero, sorry, just once, which will set the opacity to 100. And then let's set the, the stroke and the fill to white. But we're gonna have to be selective about this. So first of all, this one's gonna be filled to white. With these ones, that's just gonna be the stroke. And there you go. I'm going to select all of these and then rename the group to Instagram logo created in Figma. And there you have it. I think you could play a bit more with the colors, uh, especially with the white, uh, sorry, with the blue gradient. I think that there's some more room to play with this, right? To get just the perfect result. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this is very close. So let me just mark this for you. This is the original 
and this is created in Figma. So as you can see, Figma can also be used for logo design, not only for UX and UI design. And if you if you want to learn Figma, it's very useful to just take, doesn't matter if it's like UIs or logos or whatever, and just try and recreate these in Figma or in other programs that you're currently learning. So this is it. This is the final result. This is the Instagram logo that we have created in Figma. If you found this video useful, I would appreciate you leaving a like. And if you're interested in Figma, definitely go and check out my channel. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.